What's up, YouTube? This is Matt from Bulb Digital, and I'm going to talk to you guys about how to build a flow that will increment a number on a document library when you add documents to it. So if you guys have been curious about Power Automate like I have, recently we had a user that wanted to set up a document library that when they added documents to it, they would automatically add a number um, that would keep track of the numbering of those documents in that library. And the twist to this is that the number needs to be incremented every time the document gets added. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit about the automation you need to set up or the flow that you need to set up and some of the SharePoint pieces that you need to make that work. So if you like this type of content, working with Power Automate and integrating it with SharePoint, leave a like below and subscribe because we'll be making more content about it. So before we go into this Power Automation build, I actually want to show you how it works. We're going to see what it looks like for an end user to demo this automation on the back end. So we've got a document library that's full of files. Let's say you have a user that wants to drop a file in to get an index number assigned to it. So I just dragged and dropped the file right over top of the library. You could also click upload and search for the file there. However, the user gets it into the document library. We see that it's now available and it's been uploaded, but the number hasn't incremented yet. So now that we've dropped the file into the library, we're just waiting for the automation to run and it should be updated with a new index number of six. So after we've waited a little bit, we see now that a user can just drop a document into this document library. It'll automatically be assigned an index number and they can move along with their day. So now I wanna show you guys how to build this. And the first step in doing that is to set up your SharePoint environment. The things you're gonna need in your SharePoint environment is a document library and a list that holds that number we're using to stamp on documents. So we go into any SharePoint site and I'm gonna create a new document library from scratch. We can call it anything we want. Uh, I'm just gonna say documents two because I already have one set up and I don't wanna get it confused. We can go in there and add a number column in the library settings. We're gonna need a number column because the automation we're gonna build needs somewhere to put that number into on each document. We can create a column right within the library and just call it index number or whatever name you wanna give it that's useful for you to keep it straight. And this is a pretty basic level. You can obviously add more columns and more descriptors to whatever you're trying to build on this library, but for now we just need a number column for it to hold that number. That second part that I mentioned, we're gonna to need to add a list. And this is just gonna be a blank list, and I'm gonna call it the number list two. We'll spin that one up. And that list also is gonna have a number column. And we can create that right within the list as well. If you notice, both of these number columns that I'm adding on the document library and the list are of number type, that's the column type. That'll be pretty important, at least for this user case, you guys will wanna pay attention to that and the power automation, because there's obviously syntax in there that you'll wanna pay attention to when you're incrementing things like dates or numbers, you'll wanna make sure those are set up correctly. And for the number list, we're just gonna throw a number in there and start with zero. So that is all you need, is just a document library and a list to get this set up. So it looks like we have our SharePoint environment set up. We have our document library and our number list that's gonna hold that number. And now it's time to go into Power Automate and start building our flow. I'm just gonna create a new tab here because you can get to Power Automate right within your Office 365 suite. So I'm gonna keep these tabs open so I can monitor the documents in the list. But up here in the waffle, I can jump right into Power Automate World. It's an app right here. And there's a sidebar off to the side. We can go to My Flows. And I can create a new flow right in the top left. I'm gonna create an automated cloud flow. Start from a blank one. We we'll wanna give our flow a usable name. I'm gonna call it Auto Increment Number. And we wanna choose a flow trigger. For this one, I'm gonna do when an item is uploaded to the document library. So when I search for when an item, I can kind of look through some of these. Um, there's a lot of varieties of them. Um, specifically, what I'm looking for is when a file is created properties only. So when a file is dropped into the document library, that's what's gonna trigger this flow. So you'll see the trigger is already added as the first step of the power automation. Looks like we have some required fields to plug in here for the site address. Um, it already looks up what I have in my tenant area, but you can always enter a custom value and just paste a URL to whatever site. You have those things set up in your SharePoint environment. 
Once you have the site address in, you'll find more meaningful drop downs for the library name. I know we set up documents too for this case. So now I have the trigger paying attention to the document library I created in my SharePoint environment. So now we've got a meaningful trigger on our flow. We want to add a next step. And we want to go get that number from the number list. Whatever the number is in the current list, we want to pay attention to that and go retrieve that. So where there is a get items step that looks similar to the trigger. Again, we put in the same site address because our list is right next to our document library. And we're going to pick number list two. And we're just going to leave it at that. One thing I want to call out here in the get items step is this step retrieves everything that's in this number two item list. So even though we've only put one number in one row in this list, um, the flow step is going to treat it like an array of items. We actually have to add an additional step here and we're going to do a get item of the get item step to really drill down into that array to find that exact number ID. So we identify the same list in the secondary step and we want to find the first item that's in this list because we've only put one number in that number list. Uh, a good way to do this is to go into the expression over here instead of picking dynamic content and adding the syntax first. Then going back to dynamic content and finding the value of the items that we found in the get items step. So this is going to pull in that array of value and then there's an additional syntax we add which is question mark, square bracket, single quote and we want the ID of that one number that we have in that list. I'm actually going to copy all of this syntax and hit OK because from what I'm seeing right now lately in Power Automate, they have a bad habit of pulling in all of this syntax. So I would double check this step and make sure that all of it is still there, click update, hover over it, and ensure that that's the exact syntax you want to see. So now we have the ID of that number in that list and we can reference that for the rest of the flow. So now that we have the number, we can go in and add it to the document that triggered this flow. We're going to add another step. I'm going to search for an update file step. And we can use update file properties. That's one of the ones we see listed here. Very similar start. We just have to reference the site that we're in again, the document library that that document was triggering. And we want to add the ID of that original document that was added. So in my dynamic, dynamic content, I see that there's an ID from the original trigger. I can use that to say this is the file that we want to update. And we have that column that shows up on the document library that we added when we were provisioning the SharePoint site or the SharePoint document library. And we can go in and grab the number from that last get item step. That is all we need to do to update the document and essentially stamp the document with that number from the list. So we're not done yet. The last thing we need to do is increment the number and update it in the list. We do that by using two steps. The first one is a composition or a compose step. And we're going to use another expression here called add. And when we pick dynamic content, I'm going to go look for the step that we pulled the number from, the get item. And I'm looking for the number in the get item step. There it is. And at the end of it, I'm going to add one, comma one, to say that we want to add one to this. That's just building a compose of what the number is in the list. And we're going to add that to the final step, which is update item. So here's our update item step. I'm going to reference the site again. We're going to pick number list two. That's where our number lives. And for the ID, we're going to use the same ID as the number ID that we got out of the get item step. Title is required, not important. I'm just going to put zero there. And for the number, I'm going to put the outputs from the comp compose that we did earlier. So this will update the number list with that new incrementation that we added in this step and we hit save. So now we know because the number increments at the end of the flow, the number will always be ready for the next time the trigger runs. So safe to say this was a pretty basic example. There's a lot of opportunity here to 
add multiple incrementing numbers for certain departments or concatenate numbers together and make them randomized. Um, this is a, a good start that we just wanted to show you about how to set up something like this for a simple business process. So as always, if you guys have questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. If you think you need more hands-on help, we do do office hours once a month and you can find a link to that in the description below. Thanks for clicking on this one guys and I hope to see you in the next one.